this video today is going to be about just how I find out about interesting artists. Um, and I think sometimes you're stuck in terms of, you know, what you want to do with your art, what you want it to look like. Um, and sometimes you just need to see what's out there. And, and um, you know, I've been looking at art for a long time and now there's so many different ways you can, you can go about it. So I'm going to go over just a few of the ways that, that I've done it over the years and I continue to look at art and there's always going to be um, new things cropping up. So let's get right to it. I think the first major one is Instagram uh, now, especially for living and working artists. You can find people like, um, you know, Craig Mullins, who's been working in illustration for forever. Um, and, you know, he has a pretty decent website that you can check out. There's people like jock um they do like comic book art um there's people that work in sort of old art nouveau styles um there's well-established artists again in the entertainment industry like ken lashley does a lot of really interesting stuff you see a lot of in progress stuff what's cool about instagram a lot of times is like you see the unfinished pieces the early sketches uh, and you know, you just sometimes you can see like what materials they're using, which is kind of cool if you if you like need inspiration. You know, Ken Lashley uses Copic, so other people use other markers. Um, you know, you can see like what people are up to. Sometimes you'll get figure out, find like new releases that people are um, are creating. Find out about really interesting um, directors and illustrators through Instagram and, and everything. You can also find out about like conventions. Sometimes they'll they'll post like free ticket things and discount tickets to, to conventions. Um, let's see. You'll find people that are that, you know, um, work in the entertainment industry and you'll see their sketches for this for the shows and, and things that you like. Um, that maybe you know you wouldn't really see anywhere else after the non-disclosure agreements expire, um, they'll put them up there. And then you'll see like their own personal work, which is really interesting too, to see how like people take their jobs um, and make work that, you know, they learn from their personal work and they and from their, their paid work and, their, and they bring it back and forth together and create some interesting stuff. Um, you learn about new software that you've never uh, heard about before, and people will um, post that up. You'll look at people and you'll get their takes on like basic color theory, and you can s then see that at work on the film that they work on. And then you'll find people like uh, like this guy. I have no idea who this person is, but nobody's following them, and you know the sketches are pretty sweet. You know they're really really good, and um, you know just. It, you know, Instagram's a funky place like that. Like, popular people get more popular, and, like, people that aren't just get no attention at all. Um, and then you'll find out, like, um, about warrior painters, and they have a Discord group. You can get involved in their Discord group um, and, and begin to build communities that way. Um, you'll be able to look at, like, um, you know, now famous character designers and things and see all of their... Um, early sketches, you know, you look at something like this and you're like, oh, well, hey, like, that may be a cool way to sketch it, just totally flat tone and line work, um, you know, maybe two, three tones, you'll find out about classes they're teaching, and the neat thing about social media now is that you can just um, reach out to them directly and get them to, to, you know, come to your college or s do speaking engagements, workshops, attend their workshops, they'll answer questions a lot of times. Um, you know, and then you look at, like, people that are just fun to keep tabs on, like, like, um, Jeremy Hoffman, um, just creates like, these really funny pages and interesting little sketchbook things, um, and you'll see people that you don't hear from very much, like, uh, Rod Gwen, and, you know, he just puts stuff on Instagram every once in a while, and then will disappear, and then put some more stuff out, and, um, the illustrations are just really ridiculous and funny and, and crazy. Um, one last thought on Instagram is that 
you know, the search function is garbage. Um, you know, like the stuff that searching for particular tags comes up is never really all that great. Um, I think better ways to find it are to look at who the people you follow are following. Um, because a lot of times, like, they're, they're also very interesting. And if you look on posts and sometimes at the top of the comments, you'll see, like, who the people are responding to and maybe they're friends and maybe they're um, maybe they also do interesting stuff in illustration or, or design or something like that um, you know and and in the comments too you'll find things like um, you know you could get a print of this you can um, sometimes find out what materials they that they're that they're using you can um, uh, sometimes some people will promote their friends and stuff and and people they think are interesting. And I think that that's really um, um, useful, you know, uh, because it's a better way to find stuff by, by finding direct connections than by just going through the random search algorithm, which we all know is really terrible. Um, anyway, la that's the last thought on Instagram. The next tool that I wanted to talk about in um, how to find artists is wikiart.org. Um, a lot of stuff's on here. I mean, not everything can be on one website, right? But tons of stuff is. What's cool about it is you can search by movement, schools, genres, nationalities, time period, whatever, and um, kind of figure it out. So, like, let's say that you that you've heard of like Art Nouveau, and you like that, and you like the movement. So you can just click Art Nouveau art movement, and it just starts bringing up. Um, artists, right? And some of them you will have heard of, others you won't. Um, you know, sometimes the, the people that uh, are particularly famous don't necessarily have a lot of images on here, so the quantity of images isn't necessarily um, representative of the quality of the artist or their, their um, stature um, in here, but we can just start, like, picking people out, and I just keep I usually just scroll through and just start opening random tabs and um, and looking at various people like we all know Alphonse Mucha and then you just start scrolling through their artworks and you just get a quick um, quick overview of like what their stuff looks like so um, you can just run through and say hey I like this maybe I don't um, you know Maybe I'm not into posters, so I don't really want to like look at that and, or bother, right? Um, but uh, you know, maybe I like um, maybe I like surrealism, right? And I just want to research um, more about the about surrealism, and um, maybe I want to find somebody that I've never heard of and go from there, right? Um, Let's see here. Um, let's say I don't know much about, say, um, Miro. <coughs> Excuse me. Can take a look at Miro and say, well, hey, you know, this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, sort of this heart shaped balloon thing and some dotted line work, maybe a moon or something like that, I don't know, like, then you can just sort of deep dive, right? Um, once you deep, deep dive in there and you run out of, like, wiki art stuff, you could, um, uh, you look for Juan Miro on, on Google, <laughs> click the image search, right? So you just pull up images. Um, now there's a bunch of, like, you know, please buy this image sort of stuff. But under tools, you can um, sort by size and restrict it to large size stuff. So you'll see the um, the uh, the pixel count sometimes, and um, you know that you're not going to get some like 200 pixel image. Um, you know, other search engines do sort of similar things, like. Um, uh, DuckDuckGo has their search engine, and you'll um, pull up different results, right? Um, and 
you can restrict sizes again to just giant size, you know, and these are the kind of size where um, when you open them up, you know, you can really zoom in. Here you can even da see down to the painting texture, right? <coughs> and this is sort of something that's never been possible before, even with art books, is like being able to actually see the texture and like look around and, and kind of get into the details of it and then just back out and look at the big picture of it. It's kind of cool. The other nice thing about this is it shows you what site it came from. And you notice that a lot of really good images come from Christie's, right? So um, what's neat about this is it's an auction house site, but you'll find stuff that's never really uh, out in books or in public collections because it's all being auctioned off in secondary markets. So um, let's say that um, um, maybe I like uh, Hokusai. Maybe there's some, some Hokusai stuff like getting auctioned off that um, we don't really necessarily know about. Um, so what what's funny is you'll see zero searches, right? <laughs> and then there's this little button over here called search sold lots. And that's the one you want. And what that pulls up is everything that's sold and um, here you can actually see what's going on so you can imagine that a lot of this stuff um, doesn't necessarily come out of museums because they're minor works but what's interesting about these these potentially like minor works or whatever things that aren't as famous is that as an artist um, or as a researcher, you know, these things can be um, um, really interesting to look at. Sometimes you get really good high res images on here. Sometimes you get ones like this that aren't as good. Um, you know what I find about looking at these obscure things is like the ideas that maybe aren't as good or got abandoned are things that you could pick up and develop, um, you know because you know a lot of times these the the pieces that you know like this it's just like you know sketch almost you know this pose and this composition and the the idea of looking at the back of someone's head um, it's interesting and it's something that you could pick up and and pull into like you know character design or, or comic book work and you know you'd probably never see this image in a book and you would probably never see it in a museum on display you know museums have to have the the most famous stuff out so that they draw people into the museum and um, you know that's kind of um, important to just sort of know the other thing that you can do on google that's kind of a and when you're searching is you can um, use the site colon um, uh, search restriction. So I can um, search for images from Miro that are that have only been on Christie's, and um, and that allows me to sort of just the this also allows allows me to vet the images. Right? There's not going to be any um, fake images or like meme images or paint overs or anything like that on um, on the Christie's website, right? It's a major auction house. So um, that's another thing to be careful too, is like, are you getting like the legit images, um, you know? And you can then open them in like new tabs, find that link. Um, view the image directly and then download it if you want. Um, I keep a huge download archive of, of all of this art that I like and um, I'll open it up and you know this is kind of old now I have more that I need to add to this that I need to sort and download but I just have kept this file fo folder for years and just start adding stuff to it you know recently I've downloaded like lots more stuff by international and um, um, like indigenous artists and and things like that so but they're not even in here yet and so having um, 
uh, a um, way to organize all this stuff and track it and keep it is, is I think important as well um, you know other tools are just um, you know art galleries like you just you know search out um, Houston TX art galleries and you can very quickly like you know find tons of um, you know artists and and things that you could meet in your town at openings and um, you just go and click on their artist like this is Thornwood Gallery and just start looking at what's out there you know um, you know some of it you might like some of it you might hate um, but you get a bead of like what a gallery wants to sell you know do they sell oil paintings sculptures like is it like pushing is it poppy is it um, you know like kitsch art and um, this allows you just to quickly find like what the established artists in your town are kind of like you know there's also places um, in your town that you can meet like other artists and communities and maybe we'll talk split off and do a video about just like finding your art community too um, the other things are like are books and so that's a little tougher um, but what I like to do um, is you know take um, an artist that I like like um, you, know, you have uh, Raphael Lacoste right who does uh, the uh, illustrations for Assassin's Creed right and um, and he's like the creative director for Assassin's Creed and just you know yeah okay it's it's like entertainment industry stuff whatever um, but it's still like awesome and he's and he's got all these tutorials and he's got like an art book that you know yeah you know you don't you can't buy the actual like physical copy it's it's um it's sold out however um if you go onto this guy's gumroad account you can get the pdf book which is awesome and that's like amazing that all these people in the entertainment industry have started to do this you know you go in and you like get the PDF which is great it doesn't take up any space you know and you buy it it's cheap um, and like eight dollars like you can never get an art book for eight dollars um, it's fantastic so what you do is you just start playing these these connection games um, and uh, and go from there right you just start checking out Instagram websites and all that we'll do um, uh, a couple of other things to find interesting artists um, in the next part. The uh, next place to find out about artists is, are uh, museums. A lot of museums now are going through this this uh, like crisis because no one can go anywhere because you know like vaccine rollouts kind of like just sort of in progress and you know there's an airborne virus on the loose and you risk death by going to a museum so um, like they have put a lot of stuff online right so if you look at the um, at the MoMA website, um, they have almost a hundred thousand works online. That's amazing, right? And like, they never really would even display a hundred thousand works uh, like in their actual galleries. You know, maybe a few thousand, but not that many, right? Like, you're never going to see these pieces put up in the Museum of Art, uh, Mo Modern Art, ever, right? And they they could be really cool, you know. Um, like and by all these random artists and and there'll be people that you've never heard of and um, may never hear of again right but um, uh, that's okay because you know you can just kind of look through and if there's something that strikes you you go hey like that's kind of cool like you know, let me let me check that out further, right? What what's this artist about? And then you can deep dive on that particular artist, you know, and you can do that um, at other museums too. Like there's the San Francisco MoMA, and they have you can take a look at their exhibitions that they're doing. So right now they have one about um, like uh, Bay Area artists, seven Bay Area artists, and then you can look up each one of those artists and then um, you know research what they're about, right? get a quick little preview of what they're doing um, collage work you know flat kind of 
graphic painting, um, you know, kind of definitely Bay Area down looking muddy color scheme type stuff. Um, uh, stuff involving nature and photography. So um, those are really good places to, to begin, right? And then you can put them through the Google search thing. You can check out wiki art for them and so on. Another way is um, art fairs, right? So Volta is one of the, the sort of big satellite art fairs. And then you can look at all of the galleries that um, participated in 2020 and then, um, you know, go from there, you know, and these galleries will come from all over the world, right? Like, you know, Greenpoint Gallery in Brooklyn, and then um, they have virtual galleries, you know, then you check their virtual gallery and just start clicking around, right? Like, pick somebody random and check out their work, you know, um, and just see what's, see what's out there, see what interests you, see what you pick up on, like, look for trends, um, and everything, you know, there's also Art Basel Miami, and they have a cool website, they have, like, you know, quick pictures, you can check out their, their galleries, um, their, like, magazines and everything, so you click on galleries, and you can go back through the history of a whole bunch of shows, you know, and sort by gallery location if, if you're in any of these locations, right? Um, you know, things from all over the world, from Dallas, you know? Like, so, you know, it could be worth like a three and a half hour trip for me up to Dallas and, you know, check out this gallery and see um, what they're doing in Dallas. Um, so, like, see where they're at. The other thing are, like, conventions, right? So if you're paying attention on Instagram, sometimes you hear about conventions, like this Dutch um, convention called uh, We Are Playgrounds, and they do um, a, uh, they did, like, a hybrid virtual in-person thing this year and found out about some really cool artists and watched all these really interesting painting and drawing demos and stuff. Um, you know, blogs still have a space in the art world, you know. Um, Art F City is one of the major ones. It's been going for like a decade now, or maybe a little more, and um, it, that's been a big one. Um, I, I've met a few people that have written for there and and everything, and it's um it's a pretty good blog. Sometimes it gets a little like techish, memeish. Um, sometimes it gets a little negative, but you know it keeps you up uh, like up with what's going on. Um, Hyper Allergic started as kind of this um more uh, critical look at, at everything and um, and more analytical but still within blog post length of stuff that's going on and you'll hear um, about small shows all over the world it's grown so much in the past 10 years um, you know I wrote a couple articles for them like a long time ago um, when it was much smaller and um, as they got bigger and bigger I kind of like dipped out of it and um, and pursued my own sort of interest and, and have watched it become like something way better than than anyone could have ever expected. And you can, um, you know, look at um, stuff about art books and, and everything um, and get reviews on art books. And that's a good place to start, you know. The other thing too is if you get to go to museums, like then you can look in their bookstore and look at all their books and get a preview of what the books are actually like. So when you're buying an art book, it's like such a big investment. Um, you don't want it to be like, you know, all text and when you're there for the pretty pictures. Um, so these are kind of like the main ways that I do this. And this is basically just a, um, um, this is basically just a way that I play what I've been calling like the connections game. And so you use just one thing connects to the next, connects to the next. Like, you know, this artist worked in this style and this style, so you can look up both the styles that they worked on and then find more artists of those styles and then spread out from there, right? You can, um, you know, search out like almost any art style now, any art movement, right? Because everyone can put all, all their stuff up online. But the, um, the problem now is to have to find all those people if they're not like super popular, right? So the only way to do that is to, is to run connections together and, um, you know, find book publishers, and maybe that book publisher publishes stuff from other obscure artists that you might like, or 
you know, maybe you like modern surrealist stuff and you want to find more out about that and you go to like Juxtapose magazine and that may be too, like, too cheesy or too, like, um, you know, kind of loopy pseudo-rendered styles, I don't know, um, what's going on in Juxtapose now, maybe it's, maybe it's really interesting, maybe, you look, maybe you're really into that, and that's a place to find more stuff, um, and, you know, maybe you find out about an artist through there, and, but they're like an outlier, and then you find other places that they've worked, you find their website, you find who their friends are, and you, you play these connections, and, um, it's sort of like digging for new music, right, it takes a lot of work and effort, but, um, the tools available to you are really powerful now and you have ways to find out about artists that you've never had before and um, you know I think that should be really empowering and, and really fun to go on these these deep dive searches and you know I think um, it's also good to like either bookmark all this, all this stuff or just start a downloaded archive of all the art that you like and and create you know just sort of um, an inspiration board if you're just a maker if you're if you're um, gonna teach or plan on teaching you know like it's great not to have to search out artists and download tons of images to put into slide presentations um, you know so if you have that archive already built up when you begin teaching it's it's great um, to, to sort of help you out the other thing too is um, when you go to these museums take pictures a lot of museums allow you that now so you can like take a picture of the piece, take a picture of the title tag, and then you have the piece, the title of the year, the medium, everything, like, all together. Um, and then you archive that, you can sort it. Um, and we'll talk about, like, you know, inspiration boards and, and references and, and another kind of thing, but, um, you know, I hope this helped, and I hope you can enjoy it, and we're going to go over more stuff like this um, in the future.